Welcome to Electron Online and in, in this example we're going to show you how to find the expected value for a, an insurance company that insures homes. Let's say that they have a million policies, the average value of the homes they insure is $200,000. What would be the expected value of the premium that you want to charge homeowners to get insurance on their home? Let's say that the company has done research and over the last 10 years on average, six homes out of those million were a complete total loss, meaning they burned down or something happened to them that they would have to be replaced. 2,000 homes per year report a loss of an average of $3,000 uh, of damage that need to be replaced by the company. So here we can go back and say, what would be the premium, the minimum premium for the company to break even again, not including their expenses and so forth. So the expected value is simply the sum of the probability of occurrence times the cost or the benefit, meaning the premium that they would receive from the homeowners. So in this case, we have two things that they would have to pay out. They would have to do the replacement value of the home for six out of a million, and then they would have to pay damages for 2,000 out of a million. So in this case, it would be the probability that would be six out of one million, and then the expense would be a minus $200,000 to the insurance company to replace the home plus now we have a probability of 2,000 out of a million that damages would have to be paid so that would be 2,000 out of 1 million and the loss on <clears throat> the loss on average would be 3,000 so that's a minus to the company plus and now of course we would be receiving premiums from the 1 million homeowners and that would be of course 1 million out of 1 million because they would all be paying premiums, even the ones that have damage and losses, and that, of course, the premium would have to be X. And so the question is then, what would X have to be? Because the break-even point would be zero, so that as much money would be coming in, this would be paid out. So in this case, we're looking for X. And of course, the expected value in this case would be zero, assuming no profit and no, no coverage for expenses. So the minimum price that the pay payments would have to be. All right, let's figure this out. So here we have 200,000 um, divided by a million. Oh, so that's basically 0.2 times 6 equals. And so that would be equal to, that's kind of interesting when you think about it. Um, that would be 1.2 million divided by 1. That would be minus 1.2 plus, well actually it would be minus again because we have a minus over there, so it would be uh, 2,000 times 3,000 equals, divide that by a million, so it would be minus 6.0, and then would be plus x equal zero. All right, this is kind of interesting when you think about it. So when we add all this up together, so uh, we don't want the minus, we don't want the equal sign there. I just want to have this portion of the equation. So then we bring this to the other side. So we have x is equal to uh, 6 plus 1.2. So x is equal to 7.2 dollars. So here's kind of in, an interesting statistic. Now, of course, I don't know if the numbers are correct or not, but notice that they only would have to bring in 7.2 dollars per homeowner to cover all the damage claims to cover six homes be completely burned down, for example, and 2,000 homes claiming a damage of $3,000 of things that need to be replaced because of theft or destruction or something like that. And so we'd only have to pay premiums of $7.2 per homeowner to cover that insurance. So that's the nice thing about insurance, that a relatively low premium can cover catastrophic losses if we spread it over a large, large enough number of people. Of course, we don't pay a whole lot more than $7.2 because they have to make a profit and they have an enormous company to run with all kinds of expensive employee uh, wages and so forth. And so the premiums, of course, are a lot larger than that. So you can see that the damage claims tend to be relatively a small expense compared to having to pay for running the company itself. Now, 
if we're in an area where the risk is much greater, where the fire danger is much greater, where chance of damage due to hail and so forth is much greater, your premiums may become much larger because then we would have much larger damage claims and a much greater probability that the home would be lost due to fire or some other catastrophic events like flood damage and so forth. And so therefore, in areas where flood damage may be uh, more likely to occur, then you may have to pay for an extra premium because then the probability of catastrophic loss would be much greater and these numbers become much larger numbers to account for. So it's kind of interesting to think about premiums are large because it takes a lot of money to run these companies. They're not necessarily large because they have to cover a lot of damage claims. Of course, it all depends where it is, what the risks are, and what the probabilities are of these particular uh, damage claims. And that's how we work with the expected value to figure out what the insurance company premiums ought to be. That's how we do that.